Character feats. All right. Um, so we already know all about this. A uh, description of a feed contains the prerequisites, the benefit, and repeatable. All right. So what are we getting here? Uh, bonus feats at 20th level, and then every 30,000 experience you get an extra epic boon, yada, yada, yada. Sure. Uh, here are some descriptions of some feats that are available to characters using this playtest article. Sure. All right. Epic boon of fates. Increase your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma by one to a maximum of 30. Whenever you, uh, whenever another creature within 60 feet of you fails a d20 test, you can roll 2d4 and apply the total roll as a bonus or penalty to the d20 roll. Uses benefit no more than once per turn, and you have eight uses. When you finish a long rest, get 2d4. I actually like features that don't necessarily like fully recharge on a, on a long rest. I actually kind of like that. This is 2d4, and apply the total. That's on average, that's plus 5. So that's like advantage number 2 that you're giving someone. Because advantage on average is like plus 4.5, plus 5, give or take. So 2d4 is pretty good. And you can do oh you can actually also give it as a penalty I just I just read so it's advantage or disadvantage. Uh, it's not even a reaction so yeah this is this is really good I like this. Uh, but it is only major priest sure. All right. Epic boon of spell recall. Um, increase your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma score by one to a maximum of thirty. Whenever you cast a spell with a spell slot of 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th level, roll a d4 of the number you roll equals the slot's level. The slot isn't expended. <laughs> That's a cool one. I just like this. I just think this is neat. This is neat. Is it just like infinite? Yeah, it's just like infinite uses of this shit. Just like every single time. Like shield, roll a 1. Shield, roll a 1. Shield, roll a 1. You have like infinite, like not infinite shields, but like... Especially because I think like one, two, three, and four end up having like four spell slots each. So technically, you just get a fifth spell slot on average of each level. That's really this is really cool. I like this. Epic boon of true sights. Uh, you have true sight within a range of sixty feet. I I don't really know what else to say about that. To be perfectly honest. Spells. Um, did they hold up? Are they talking about changing spells or what are they doing? Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, I'm just quickly looking what they uh what they did. Sorry. Uh, okay, so spells. This section presents new or revised spells for you to play test. It also includes two spell lists mentioned elsewhere in this document: the divine and primal lists. Divine Spell Lists. A divine spell draws on the power of gods in the outer planes. Clerics and paladins harness this magic. Is there another class? No, right? I think it's purely paladins and clerics, I think. Artificers are probably going to be arcane. Bard is arcane. Warlock is arcane. Wizards is arcane. Sorcerers are arcane. So, yeah. Um... If a spell school of magic is di oh, if a spell's school of magic is different from what appears in the 2014 player's handbook, an asterisk appears after the school. That's pretty important because mostly you're also gonna have to look at abjuration spells, right? Um, for the druid, yeah, resistance is still abjuration, but required a material back in the day, I think. Cure wound. Oh, you can cast cure wounds now. In your wild shape. That's uh, in a moon druid wild shape. That's good to know. Um, healing word as well. What it does used to be. What did what did cure wounds used to be evocation? Okay. All right. Thunder smite is now transmutation. Wrathful smite enchantment. Glimmering Smite, formerly Branding Smite. That's just weird. Oh, Prayer of Healing is Abjuration now. Good to know. Okay. Banishment Conjuration. Yeah, Mass Healing Word. So all the healing spells are Abjuration now. Which, did they? They didn't do that purely for Druids, right? I hope. 
That'd be dumb. Um, actually, why am I... L oh, no, wait, but it's also going to be on this list, I'm assuming, then. Yeah, cure wounds and stuff. Okay, so healing... So healing... Sp so pretty much what we're saying is a moon drip. That's probably why they got rid of... Um, expend the spell slot to heal. Because then it makes sense. Right? It used to be expend the spell slot to heal yourself for a number of D8s. But now you can just pick up Cure Wounds and then that part of the nerf of Moon Druid is gone. So that makes sense. Okay, that's a good thing to know. That's okay. That's good to know. That actually makes sense. Because they're just replaced. So technically they actually buffed it, ironically enough. Because not only can you now cast Cure Wounds to heal yourself, you can also cast stuff like Absorb Elements and shit. Nice. Nice. I like it. I think that... No, that's a good change. I still fucking hate Druid. I just want to mention that, but it's a good change. That was something that they thought about. Spell descriptions. Uh, okay. Banishing Smite. Bonus action when you immediately... Okay. Um, I think Banishing Smite used to be a spell. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, if I can find my fucking spells. There you go. Uh, Banishing Smite. Okay. So. Uh, hold up. I'm gonna... I think I have to scroll down a little bit to get everything. Yeah. So casting time bonus action, which I think is on every single one of these is a thing. Uh, range self, component, focal... Uh, no longer concentration, though. Oh. Okay. Intriguing. Sure. Uh, the target hit by the stride takes an extra 5d10 force damage, and the target must make succeed on a charisma saving throw or be transported to a harmless demi plane for the duration. While in the demi plane, the target has the incapacitated condition. The end of each of its turns, the target repeats the save. Ending the spell on itself on a success. Okay. So, yeah, they pretty much took the, the new banishment. I put it on a smite. Yeah. If the spell lasts on a target for one minute, and the target is an aberration, celestial, or... Read the rest of the spell. Elemental, a fate, or fiend, the target doesn't return. Yeah, so pretty much the changes to banishment, but put them on banishing smite. That's what we're saying, right? Yeah, okay, so. I will say the original banishing smite only banished the target if they had 50 or fewer hit points. Then again. Yeah. I mean, they nerf banishments again in a way that makes sense because you weren't really able to counter banishments. I still hate the fact that you can't banish yourself, but eh, who cares? And I still, the, the thing that I just hate is the fact that they got rid of, like, if it's not inherited to this plane, that's really my biggest issue, but oh well. It doesn't really matter. Blinding Smites. Uh, bonus action. Is that a new one? Blinding Smite feels like a new one. Oh no, it's not. Never mind. Um, Blinding Smite now says, bonus action, which you immediately after, uh, which you take immediately after hitting. Oh wait. Oh, you're not pre-casting it anymore. Oh, I didn't realize that. You're not pre-casting these anymore. So you hit them, and then you kind of get a bonus action to... That's good. That's really good. I like that. It pretty much just allows you to change your Divine Smite. I think that's the idea they probably went with then. Actually, I'm just thinking of something now. I just thought of something. If 
you're gonna you can't use the and you can't use it on the same turn you can't spell. okay no i was quickly thinking like did they say you can't use a spell uh you can't use divine smite after you cast a spell but you can't use it on the same turn that you use a spell so you can't like yeah sorry i was just order i was thinking like if you could divine smite and then cast a spell but you can't because it just says you can't do it on the same turn sadly enough all right, uh, but anyway, so pretty much the thing that we're saying now is you use your action to attack, and then as a bonus action, you cast your smite immediately after. So you don't have to pre-cast it anymore in case you miss your next attacks or something. So that's good. Target hit by the strike takes an extra 3d8 radiant damage, and the target must succeed on a constitution saving throw or be blinded until the spell ends. End of each of its turn can repeat the saving throw, ending the spell on itself on a success. So pretty much got rid of the, the concentration. So they got rid of a lot of concentration. That's good. Find familiar. Yes, the thing I was really afraid of. Oh, that was the thing I was afraid of. Okay, here we go. Find familiar. Casting time, one hour. Range, ten feet. Component, VSM. That's the plan. Also, it's getting pretty dark here, so I'm going to leave a light on. Uh, you gain the service of an otherworldly spirit, 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 which manifests as a little animal in an unoccupied space of your choice within range. Creature uses the otherworldly familiar stat. If you already have a familiar from this spell, um, you transform it into a new one, but it retains its memories. You don't get a second familiar. Whenever you cast a spell, choose the familiar's creature type, celestial fae or fiend, and an environment, air, land, or water. Familiar resembles a tiny animal of your choice that is native to the chosen environment. Both choices, creature type, and environment determine certain traits in the stat block. The familiar is an ally to you and your companions. In combat, it shares your initiative, but it takes its turn immediately after you, obeys your commands. No action required, but re can't attack unless you use your reaction on its turn to command it to do so. If you don't give it any commands, Familiar takes the dodge action. Familiar disappears if it drops to zero hit points, if you dismiss it as a bonus action, or if you die. When it disappears, it leaves behind anything it was wearing or carrying. Um, okay, if you cast this spell again, you decide whether you summon the Familiar that disappeared or a different one. Okay, as this is a magic action, you can see what your familiar sees and hears what it hears until, sure, until the end of your next turn. Okay. So you have to keep on using your action. I don't remember how this was in Find Familiar. It's just like you can watch through its eyes, but you can still use other actions, right? Although that never really made sense. Okay, so what are we saying now? So, I think not a lot changed. I think they just, pretty much they got rid of the idea of like, choose a tiny creature, which here, I'm, I don't have a problem with that. Um, but yeah, so you have a climbing speed on land, you have a flying speed in the air, you have a swimming speed in the water. But here, like, to be fair, the issue for me isn't even necessarily the three forms for Druid, although I think that three forms is pretty lazy. It's the fact that you got rid of just the hit points that we, like, the hit point buffer that you get when you transform. Here, it doesn't really matter. The hit points of the familiar don't necessarily matter as much. They just streamlined it, really. Right? Like, you know... Does one per spell level mean that it starts at eleven for first level? I don't. I don't know. Is there a is there a duration by the way? Duration instantaneous. Okay, so was find familiar an hour back in the day? 
I keep saying back in the day as if it's been years since 5th edition, <laughs> but like... Oh yeah, no, it used to be an hour. I think this is good. No, I think this is good. Also, ironically enough, the reaction where, like, you're capable of um, casting a spell through it, I think actually got buffed because it used to be 100 feet. And now it's 120? Yeah. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, your damage type of your scratch is determined by... Who uses a familiar to attack, though? Let's be honest about this. Uh... 